Once upon a time, I was riding my bicycle. No, no, I was riding my scooter. I had a red scooter because it was like a, it was a hot, sunny day, and I was only five years old, and I was tired of my Tinker Toys. And Tinker Toys are kind of like Legos or blocks that you build with, and I was building with my, my uncle, Jim Williams. But then, like, everybody went away, and nobody was in my house, and I, I went outside, and I was on my red scooter, and I was going to the park. And I think I was about five years old, and, and I was just minding my own business, and I was going towards the park, and, and I was turning the corner, um, and going past the, sh the, the, sewer, the sewer drain, you know, the, the, the hole, you know, the manhole where the water goes into, into the, the pipes under the street. Um, turning the corner and, and see this little girl and the little girl says to me, what's your name? And I was really shy and I barely said Joey. And, uh, and she said, my name is Tiffany. And, uh, and she said, do you want to play? Do you want to play with me? And uh, we started and we started playing and we started um, like playing this Batman and Robin game. It's like a chasing game, like a tag. And, I was on my red scooter and she was on her tricycle and, and I was chasing her, going after her, I was running after her, uh, around her, um, her mom's car and we went around a few times and then her, like, her mother came home or her mother was already home. I think her mother came home and, and she said to her mother, hey, you want to meet my new boyfriend or this is my new boyfriend? And, and her mother said, no, he's not. He, He's not your boyfriend. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. And uh, I was only five years old, so so I didn't really think a lot about it. And I was a little confused at the moment about what they were talking about because I guess maybe I didn't know what boyfriends and girlfriends were. Because I was only five years old. I was like, I'm just a baby, you know? It's like, oh, not like I was born yesterday. I was almost born yesterday at that moment, more then than, than now kind of thing, and uh, so uh, I, I lived uh, about seven houses away from her, and uh, in, the, in the trailer park in like a ghetto in Forest Grove, Oregon in the United States, and, and uh, I really liked her, but then when I got older, she started having other boyfriends, and, uh, and that was really, really sad, and, and this has happened a lot, you know, I was born in 1985, and, and uh, I, I see this happening, you, you like somebody, and then, and you see the, the person that you like go off with somebody, and you get really, really sad, and you don't know what to do. And, but then, I guess, well, the one thing you could do is you can try to remember the, the good times you had, and uh, you try to continue to be a, a likable person. Don't, don't become too bitter and too angry and too sad when bad things happen. Try to learn from them, and try to, um, try to make it a part of you, like, and try to continue to to be the kind of person that you always have been. And sometimes, like in my life, I, I lose track of who, who I, I was and I become a, like more like a monster. And, and, I, and I shouldn't, but I, I do because I let circumstances and people and all these things uh, ruin me, uh, destroy me, and, and, and it becomes very, very devastating and, and, and belittling. <laughs> it just, it's, it's horrible, but it's like, you gotta, you gotta find uh, the goodness inside of you that's always been there, that comes from Christ, and, and you know, like, you know, it comes from God Himself, and He's the Creator and the Savior, and, and, and you gotta remember who you are, and, and it's always been around, and you gotta, like, try to remember it, and you gotta write it down, and you gotta, like, revisit it as much as possible. Like, even, like, once a day when you wake up in the morning, you gotta try to remember who you are, what you're good at. And for me, like, I remember that I'm, um, I like to talk and I can make people laugh and smile and, and I'm, I'm spontaneous and I'm creative and, um, and I'm, I'm a writer and I'm, you know, I'm a researcher. I can, I can find things out. I know how to problem solve things and, and find solutions and talk to people and, and I'm like an icebreaker. I had a nickname, icebreaker, at a camp I worked at, Camp Karatli, uh, a Salvation Army camp in more boring Boring Oregon, 2008, I was an icebreaker, you know, an icebreaker, they, they, they start conversations, they break the ice, and, and that's one of the things I've done, and, 
I still try to do, and even as an English teacher in Vietnam since 2012, I, I try to break the ice or, or try to break the leg. I try to break my legs. Um, I try to do the best that I can, and um, I think it's very important. And, and for me, uh, like, even as far back as 1999, I was about maybe 14 years old, I started writing uh, like these cards, these papers, these um, letters, these articles, these encouragement articles, the EA, these things for people. I would encourage people. I would draw the pictures of people. Like for one card or one paper, I would draw like, say, I draw a picture of you, and then I say some good things about you. I come up with a title about who you are. I make up a name. Like maybe you look like a squirrel. Maybe you look like strawberry, especially for girls. I made a lot of these, mostly for girls, maybe girls that I liked. But it wasn't really about me trying to get into their pants or trying to get into their shoes. Uh, maybe more about trying to get into their shoes. And that was very important for me uh, to try to help people and encourage people. And, and I got the idea of the EA from the, the Pokemon cards. And, and I was going to make my make my own kind of business, my own kind of cards. And it was really important and, and really creative. And, and I did a lot of these things like in my life, coming up with things like, you know, I play a little guitar and piano. And, and, um, and I write my own songs. And I started making uh, videos, you know, videos like this one you're watching. I started making my own videos when I was 10 years old. And in like 1995, I started writing more. And then uh, getting prepared to make videos and then early in 1996 me and my family and my friends we we made an hour-long Power Rangers video this film and, 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 and so I continued to do things like that in 1998 I started making uh, what was it uh, this comic strip because I like to draw and, and it was about these two stuffed animals that I had a Sparky for the Wana Club and the Jimmy Cricket Ninja uh, this, you know, uh, you know, it's like a, it's like a cricket animal, a stuffed animal, two stuffed animals, and the Jimmy, Jimmy Cricket Ninja, like he's a stuffed animal that that I won in a in a dancing contest that I was in in the Easter of about 1992. I think it was 1992, and uh, and I was seven years old, and you know, I was dancing in in the park on on the basketball court at the park near near my house. And, and I was dancing around a bunch of like taller girls and taller people, and I was just moving my body. And you know, I'm not trained classically as an actor or as a dancer or like Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan or, or you know all these other great people. But I tried my best, and I won something. Maybe everybody won, and everybody's a winner kind of thing. And so nobody really won because everybody won kind of thing. And in, in that contest, because I wasn't really looking at everybody else. But I think, as far as I know. Not everybody won, and I won a dancing contest. So, you know, sometimes in my life I win things. Like I won things in the in the clubs that I was in. Like uh, I was in Awanas and, and Olympians. These are uh, Bible clubs where you go and you learn about the Bible and you have a good time with other people and you have snacks and activities and games and you know you sing songs and you, you learn something about the Bible and you learn you know about you know about God you know religion Christianity. You learn some good things like about how to live how to be nice to your neighbors, how to not lie and steal and do bad things, and, and, and you learn how to talk to people and play games and, and all these good things. And we have these activities and things like learning the verses, you know, memorizing, remember things, uh, and say them, and then you get like uh, some awards, some trophies and stuff, and I, I won some of those, uh, some, some of that are really hard to get. And I was, uh, I was homeschooled uh, until, until I was 15 years old, and I went to high school, and, and and I was in a drama class, and I was in art classes, and then I, I was even in, uh, like, I started going to school dances, and I was in an art club and drama club, and, and, and I was getting involved more, even though, like, before I was more shy, and then I, um, I went to, like, uh, two Bible colleges. I went to the Word of Life Bible Institute in, in uh, Potter's Hill, New York, and, uh, and I was involved with the shoulder ministry team, and so it's like, the part of who I am is working with children, working with kids, working with the youth, the younger people, and trying to inspire them to become better people because we know that the children and the kids are part of our future, and it's very important that we remember that kind of thing, that it's so remember, so remember, yeah, it's so important that whether we continue to, to, to do the things that we're designed to do, that, you know, the things with our talent and our gifts and Oh, it's so important, and, but sometimes we forget. Like when we're younger, we're, we're more likely inclined more for art 
And then when we get older, like past the third grade, or like about eight to nine or ten years old, when, when we start to get older, we, we stop doing art, we stop doing creative things as much, because especially when other people, like the teachers and the parents and other people, they say to us, oh, you can't do it, you're not an artist, and, and it's not you know, a good thing, you, know, you can't really make money, it's so hard to make money with those kinds of things, and, and so then we get discouraged and we tend to stop, and it's so sad when really we can do those things, we can live our dreams, and, and like, for example, in my, uh, in my last year in high school, I, have a, I had a senior project, so I made a pocket ball table, I had to build this thing, and I had some friends that helped me, and that was really good, and it was designed similar to like the carpet ball tables, the, the gutter ball tables, uh, the, the, the pool tables, you play pool with the you know, with the balls and the stick, and uh, it's kind of like that, but a little smaller than a pool table. And it's similar, but a little different uh, with the rules. And, uh, but used, we use the same balls. Use the pool balls in, in this game. And, and I made it, and I gave it to my shirts, you know, uh, the Hillsborough Community, Community Baptist Shirts in Hillsborough, Oregon. And um, it was really good. And, uh, and then I went, I, I continued to do things in my life after, like, after, after high school and after college, and I was in the Revolution Hawaii, a Salvation Army program in Hawaii where we helped the poor and we helped the children, and that was really good. And and, um, and then I was involved. Um, I was involved in different uh, camps, and I was working at different camps, five different years uh, in in Oregon and New York and California, and even a little bit in Hawaii too. And and it's really really interesting and inspiring when you're able to do things to, to help people, especially younger people, uh, especially at the camps, and it's very, very interesting. And, and uh, so I was involved with the different camps, and I was involved with, uh, I, uh, like, at a school. And I started working at an after-school program at the, the Daniel A. Grout Elementary School in, uh, in Portland, because I was living in Portland in 2008. And, uh, I was living in Portland um, for about four years, and then I moved back in with my father, and I spent uh, more quality time with my father, and that was really good uh, for about almost two years, a year or two, and then uh, at the end of 2012, I went to Vietnam, and then I started um, helping people in Vietnam uh, since 2012, and, and I feel like um, my life has been full of many, many opportunities. So. So I was born in 1985, and now in 2014, I'm 29 years old, and, and I'm single. I never had a real girlfriend, uh, ne ne never had an official girlfriend. And, and people say to me, "Oh, why you never have a girlfriend? Why are you why are you not married?" That's what Guy Trino would say. Like, you should have a wife, and you should be married and doing those things. And they ask me, "Why are you not married?" And I say, "Like I say, like you know, I'm like." Uh, how do I say? I'm too busy. Oh, I'm too busy. Oh, man. I'm like Conan O'Brien. I'm too busy. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Hey, hey, hey. I'm too busy. I'm on the Sultanator. I want to pump you up. Hop into the shopper. Um, you know, it's like life is short. And even though, you know, I, I thought about, you know, getting married, especially like I wanted to marry Tiffany Cumbo, that girl, for the beginning of this beginning of this video I was talking about Tiffany and, and I really liked her but you know it didn't work out it didn't work out it didn't, it didn't oh man it didn't work out oh oh man I am so upset oh hey, man why didn't it work out oh man I'm so upset why didn't it work out and you know I could be bitter about it or I can get back up on my horse and I can do something with my life and I can use these stories to uh, maybe inspire other people to say hey, it's not the end of hey it's not the end of the world hey it's not the end of the world who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Joey Arnold. Mm. Wow. SpongeBob Square Pants. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's sad, you know, like, like all these different things that, that comes to your life and hits you, but, you know, no pain, no gain. You gotta get back up. And I, I can tell you all these horrible things that happened in my life, but it's not really that important. The lessons that I learned from, from my life. Are, are interesting and I'm, I'm happy and I'm grateful and I'm going to continue so um, I'm happy that I had the opportunity to meet Tiffany and, and I'm going to continue to meet people because that's who I am so who are you you, you got to continue to be who you are and never stop never stop and never surrender oh man because oh man life is it's 
so like discouraging when you don't see the the perspective of the future. Like if you don't really know what is ahead of you, you're not really gonna be uh, like grateful. But sometimes you are more grateful for the good things when you realize how short life is and you realize how special it is when people are nice to you and when good things happen. And, and, and you, you appreciate it more when bad things happen. You realize that bad things happen more often than the good things. And, and, and you have to realize that it's like you can't really... You can't really make the good things happen all the time, so you better be thankful for when the good things come into your life. And, and I was lucky for all the different things that, that, that has happened in my life. When I met Tiffany and I met um, Janet and Bill Bailey and, and uh, Bhakti and Gaia, and um, there's a, a, lots of people that I met. Less people when I was younger, but as I got older, I started running to people, and they would inspire me, and you know, this this people from all these different places uh, all around you, and especially uh, in high school and then more so in college. And, and, and now like with this thing called Facebook, oh man, just, like with technology and the internet and, and just like traveling to different places I've lived. First like in America, I've met so many different people, like hundreds to thousands of people. And, and, and then it, it's hard to remember everybody's names, but you try to continue and you try to do your best. And, uh, and you try to sing the song, I love you, you love me. And da 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 You know, like, you try to sing, you try to sing because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Or at least it should be. And you should, you should, you should continue because um, as the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And you don't let it back you up into a corner. It's like I'm in a corner right now. Oh man, don't let things back you into the corner. And uh, but sometimes you gotta be in a corner sometimes. Mm, and uh, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. Maybe I don't know. But um, it's like uh, oh man, I need time, time to think about this, and I, I need time to breathe. Just breathe. But uh, you know, I just wanted to make a quick story, but I guess. I decided, oh man, maybe I should make this video a little longer. Because uh, I thought maybe it should be longer. So let me, let me tell you, oh man, you never know what's going to happen in your life. For example, the story at the beginning of this video, that's my example. You never know when you're going to meet people. Like me, I'm, I'm, I'm minding my own business, I'm going to the park, I meet a girl. She becomes inspiring. She becomes a really good friend for many, many years until about 2003, uh, and she died. And I don't exactly know why she died, but she died, and it was really sad. And I should have called her that night before she died. And I was really, really sad. She died on the 5th of April, 2003, and that was just about 11 years ago. And I was really sad. And so it's like maybe. I um I regret that and it's something that we gotta we gotta think about sometimes and it's it's really sad and I'm really sad but at the same time I realize that you never know what's going to happen so you meet people and people become a part of your life but then at the same time you never know when they're gonna leave your life but and it's like you can always say oh I have more time and I'll see them again or I have more time on this earth and boom, you could be dead or boom, they could be dead, they could be gone, they can move, they may never talk to you anymore, um, they, they may get paralyzed, all these horrible things happen, so you need to take the time today, now is your opportunity to really make a difference and to, to tell people how you feel and if you really love them, if you really care about them, you gotta show them, you gotta tell them, and love is an accent, love is not just a feeling, and I try to tell people that. I was telling the girl Anna yesterday, the Fuji industry. Now I was like, oh man, you gotta remember this, oh man. Love is not just a feeling. love is an action, love is a commitment. And, and, and we gotta commit to these fruit of the spirits for the rest of our lives because these things are the things that cultivate and enhances our life for how we are for now and, and 
for the rest of eternity, whether we are, we're here in the presence of the Lord or not. It's like we got the opportunity to, to really challenge ourselves into becoming better ultimate humans in everything. And, and we can really do that to the best of our abilities through Christ alone, Jesus Christ. And, 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 and yet, too often we try to do things through our own strength and we don't really realize how short life is and we use those opportunities to, to be blessed and to be inspired and to be used by the Lord and, and to, to really make the world a better place. And we know that the world is a better place for the Christians and, and they're the ones because they're the ones that are moving through God and they, they, they are the hands and the feet of the Lord and those are the things that make the world better and that's where light is the light of the world shines through the people of the Lord because that is the body of Christ and, and that's where everything blossoms like, like a flower blossoms and everything is so much better when we realize how big this world and how little this world is at the same time. It's big because of the opportunity and little because of how short life is, how fragile life is. I'm fragile. Boo boo boo. I'm fragile. And and, and we gotta take the opportunities while we still can because you never you never know when you're gonna meet another little girl named Tiffany who says who says, What's your name? Let's run around a car. But when that opportunity comes, you're really going to have to take it. And, and I, I encourage you, go ahead and take it. You know, like, just take it. Just, just take it. I mean, it's like, go ahead, punk. Make my day. Like, just go ahead. You know, cowabunga, dude. You know, just go and take the opportunity and, and be yourself and don't lose yourself and don't let things and, and people take your individuality away from I'm Joey Arnold, and I approve this message. Thank you for watching. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. This video was filmed at the Mr. Ribs Barbecue Restaurant. 156 B. Vincan. Street, uh, the eighth ward, Fung Tam, uh, District Four of Ho Chi Minh City, Mr. Ribs Barbecue. For more information, type in Mr. Ribs Barbecue or type in Joey Arnold. Thank you for watching and good night. Boom boom boom.